Hi, I'm Scott Flowers from Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the HPE ProLion DL380 Gen 10 server. In this video, we're gonna show you how to set your IP address. Let's get going. Hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the HPE ProLiant DL380 Gen 10 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, let's hop in. Uh, this video is specifically focused on IP addresses. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna show you two ways to set your IP address. We're gonna first show you how to set your static IP address, and then we're gonna show you how to enable DHCP. Let's rock and roll. Hey, this has been with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to configure your network settings on your server. Specifically, I'm gonna show you how to set a static IP address and how to configure DHCP. There's really gonna be two places that you can set an IP address. One, you have your ILO IP address, and two, you have your actual IP address for your network card. In this video, we're gonna be configuring the network settings for the ILO, but the principles we show in this video are also going to be useful in case you want to set an IP for your network card. So first, I'm gonna show you how to set a static IP address, and then after that, I'm gonna show you how to configure DHCP. The first thing we wanna do is boot up our server, and during post, we wanna press F9 to enter into system utilities. Once we're inside of system utilities, we want to select system configuration, and then we want to select ILO5 configuration utility, and then now we wanna select network options and inside of network options we want to scroll down to where it says dhcp enable we want to go ahead and turn this to off and as you can see the fields below were originally grayed out but they are no longer grayed out so we can go ahead and select them and start editing those fields the first field we're going to change is the ip address the IP address that you use for this may be very different from what we put in. It really depends on how your network is set up. The first three octets of your IP address need to be the same as the other devices in your network. And then that last octet is going to be something that is unique to this device. And it's gonna act as almost like a an identifier. It's important to make sure that last octet isn't the same as another device in your network because then you can have an IP conflict. The second field is the subnet mask. For us, this is gonna be 255, 255, 255, And for most networks, this will be the same, but if you're unsure, just go ahead and check another device in your network and see what its subnet mask is and then go ahead and copy it. After that, we have our gateway IP address, which this is really representing the IP address of the router. Now, it may not always be a router. There could be some type of firewall appliance or some type of device that's breaking up um, your network into multiple different subnets. Um, this IP address will pretty much just be the entry point into that subnet. And generally, it's just going to end in a one. And then the first three octets are going to be the same as what it is for the rest of your other devices. And if you're ever unsure, you can always just check another device in the, your network and see what it is for that. And then just go ahead and copy it over. The subnet mask and the gateway IP address is going to be the same across devices that are in the same subnet. You want to make sure that if you're using an IP address, you're not using an IP address that's from a different subnet because then they will not be able to communicate and you will not be able to connect to the internet. Once we are done, we can press F12 to save and exit. And then we will get a dialog box here. So we just want to click on yes save changes. We will get another dialog box that will say that the ILO will need to be restarted. So we can go ahead and press OK. It may take a little bit of time for the ILO to reset. So we'll go ahead and fast forward to save you guys some time. Once it's done, it's going to prompt us to reboot our server. So we can just go click the reboot button. And once the server comes back up, then your IP address will be all good to go. So that is how you set a static IP address. Now we're gonna show you how to configure DHCP. In order to configure DHCP for your ILO, we will need to go to that same menu that we set a static IP. 
So we can boot up our server and during post, we wanna press F9 to enter into system utilities. Once inside of system utilities, we wanna click on system configuration and then ILO 5 configuration utility. And then now click on network options. So at the very bottom, you can see our static IP information that we assigned. So if we go to this DHCP enable, we can change this to on and that's all you gotta do. DHCP is configured. It is that simple. And as you can tell, compared to setting a static IP, it's a lot simpler to do. And essentially what's happening is when we set this to DHCP, it's going to the DHCP server in the network. This is generally built into a router, but in a lot of enterprise environments, there will be a dedicated DHCP server. Once that device enters the network, it's going to reach out to the DHCP server and it's going to grab an IP address from the IP address pool and it's going to send that down to that device and it's going to assign all of that information so you do not have to do it manually. If you found this video useful, go ahead and leave a like. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down in the comments section below and if you're looking for some servers for your home lab or data center we got plenty of brands in stock ranging from hp dell and super micro you name it go ahead and reach out to us at sales at cloud that's sales at cloud